Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome back to Electronics episode 31. So today we're going to make a binary subtractor. Now currently I have four of my full adder circuits all chained together. So the carry out of one full adder goes to the carry in of the next full adder. And since we have four of them, this allows us to add two four-bit binary numbers together. Now I could have used a half adder for this first adder circuit right here. Instead I'm just going to hard code the C in value to zero and the reason why is going to become apparent very soon. And I've also taken all of the A inputs to each adder, and I've just kind of moved them down here, just so they're easier to read. So that's our first number to the adder, and the B inputs are the second number to our adder. So if we wanted to do 9 plus 4, we could plug 9 in to the A number. 1, 0, 0, 1 is 9, plus 4, 0, 1, 0, 0. And this first adder here, is going to add the first bits of each of the numbers together. So 0 plus 1 plus our 0 carry in is just 1, and it'll carry out 0. And the next two digits, 0 plus 0, is just going to give us a 0, and so on and so forth. 0 plus 1, that's going to give us a 1 here with no carry, and another 0 plus 1 will give us a 1 with no carry. So we can obviously see that 9 plus 4 is 13, 1, 1, 0, 1 in binary. But we're here to talk about subtraction. Remember many episodes ago we learned about two's complement, and that's how we are going to be representing binary numbers from here on out in this series pretty much. Remember with two's complement we use the last available bit to represent the sign of the number. So if this last bit, in our case of a 4-bit number, this position right here, if it's 0 we know we have a positive number, if it's 1 we know we have a negative number. So just as a quick refresher, let's say we wanted to do 4 minus 1. Well, you'd have 4, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, and we want to do minus 1, which is 0, 0, 0, 1. And we did this by converting this here number into its 2's complement form to make it a negative 1. So to make this positive 1 a negative 1, so to make 0, 0, 0, 1 into negative 1 in 2's complement, remember you flip all of the bits, so we get 1, 1, 1, 0, and then you add 1 to that. So we wind up getting 1, 1, 1, 1. And that's how you represent negative 1 in 2's complement. Notice how this leftmost bit indicates that we have a negative number. So we'd essentially just do 4 plus negative 1 in 2's complement, which is all 1's. And if we do this addition, we get 1, 1, 0, that carry to 1. So we get another 0 and another carry of 1. So we get a 1 down here. And you'll notice that we get the answer here of 3. And we actually have to ignore this final carry out value when we're working with 2's complement. At least we have to ignore it for the value of our result. To be completely honest, I'm not sure if I discussed this in the 2's complement video, but real quickly I'm going to go over this overflow bit here. Basically, if the second to last carry here, so this carry from our third column to our final column here, let me change colors, matches the carry out value of this last column, this actual carry out value, then you know that everything went fine. We have to ignore the carry out value, we can't use it, it's not useful to us. But since this one matched the previous carry in value, or the previous carry out of the third column, we know that everything was fine. But let's say, let me go over here now, <laughs> let's say we have tried to add um, 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1, plus 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. And these are 2's complement numbers, so the 0 represents that they're both positive numbers. Then here we would get an answer of 0, we carried a 1, so we'd get 1 plus 1 plus 1, it's going to give us a 1 with a carry of 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is going to give us a 1 with a carry of 1 over here. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is going to give us a 1 with a carry of 0, like so. Here you'll notice that this second to last carry out value from the third column was a 1. We had to carry a 1 to this fourth column here. And after we did that addition, we had a carry out of 0. So since these two do not match, they're not equal, this is invalid. This answer is essentially garbage. We overflowed, meaning we can't represent 7 plus 7 using our only 4 bits in 2's complement. So in this case, we basically have to ignore the entire math that we did because it's invalid. So we actually use that final carryout value to check if a particular answer using these 2's complement numbers 
are valid or not. So I'm going to leave that explanation there. Let's get on to our full adder circuit and how we can make this a binary subtractor instead. Let's stick with the same problem. We're trying to do 4 minus 1, which should equal 3. So let's plug 4 in to our A number. So we'll have 0, 1, 0, 0. And now, I'm just going to erase this so I have a little more space. We want to subtract 1 from that. So our second number that we pass in here is going to be 1 in binary. So all we have to do to convert this circuit of full adders into a subtractor is convert this B number into its 2's complement. So in this case we're passing in a positive 1. If we can just automatically make that a negative 1, then all we're doing is 4 plus negative 1 and that'll get us 3. Or if we had already passed in a 2's complement number here, such as such as negative 1, like 1, 1, 1, 1, then 4 minus negative 1 is just going to become 4 plus the opposite of negative 1, which is positive 1. Both would get us the answer of 5. So to make this B input 2's complement, we have to flip all the bits and add 1. Flipping all the bits is easy. We can just use a NOT gate to do that. Remember this NOT gate here simply inverts whatever was given to the gate. So there we go. This 1 is going to become a 0, this 0 is going to become a 1, same for all the others. Now this is almost there, but we're missing the add 1 portion to get this number into 2's complement. So I guess we could make a whole other adder circuit, and we could simply add 1 to this inverted number, and that would work fine, and then pass that on to our full adders. But that's really inefficient and a lot of extra circuitry that we don't need. Instead, to add 1 to this inverted B number, all we have to do is look at this carry in value of our first full adder. All this carry in value is going to do is essentially add 1 to this first column of numbers we have. And that will effectively add 1 to this here inverted number to make it 2's complement. So instead of hard coding this carry in value to 0, we will hard code it to 1 instead. And instantly, like that, just by adding some NOT gates on one of the numbers, our B number, and by hard coding the first carry in value to 1, we have a subtractor, which is going to do our A number minus B and give us the result. Let's step through this and we should get the same thing that we had in our example. So we have our first digits, so 0 plus 1, except this got inverted to a 0. So we have 0 plus 0 plus 1, because our first carry in starts at 1. So that's just going to give us a 1 in the output and a carry out of 0. The next two digits, we have 0 plus 0, but this gets inverted to a 1. So we really have 0 plus 1 plus the carry of 0. So we're going to get a 1 and carry 0 again. The third digit, 1 plus the inverted 0, which is a 1. So we have 1 plus 1 plus 0, nothing was carried. That'll give, it, that'll give us a 0 with a carry value of 1. And finally, 0 plus this here that got inverted, so a 1. So 0 plus 1 plus our carry of 1 is going to give us a 0, zero <laughs> zero with a carry of 1. So before we read this number and see if we got it right, we have to check our two last carry out values. So since this carry out here matches this final carry out value that we got, we know that this subtraction was valid. We're still within the range of 2's complement numbers with the 4 bits that we have. So since these match, we have a valid result. So now we just ignore this last carry out value. We can't look at it. And we have our answer, 0011 in 2's complement. So we know we have a positive answer. And it's simply the value 3. There we go, 4 minus 1 equals 3. And we have a binary subtracting circuit. Let's try one more example that's a little bit different. Now we're not going to be doing any other work in this episode, but I want to show you what happens say when we try to subtract two negative numbers together that are already negative. So let me just erase these things right here. We're going to keep our good old carry in as one. We're going to keep this our subtractor circuit with the inverters. And let's try to do something like negative four minus negative one. And that should of course get us negative 3. So how do we have negative 4 in 2's complement? Well, if you write out positive 4, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, we flip the bits, 1, 0, 1, 1, 
and you add 1. 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so our A number is going to be 1, 1, 0, 0, which is negative 4 in do's complement. And our second number is going to be negative 1, because we're doing minus 4 minus, we have our subtractor circuit, negative 1. We've already done this earlier in this episode. Negative 1 in 2's complement is 1, 1, 1, 1. Now let's see if we get negative 3. Let me erase all the answer positions up here. So the first digit is going to be 0 plus an inverted 1, 0. So 0 plus 0. But we have this carry that starts out as 1. So we get a 1 with a carry of 0. I forgot to erase the rest of these. Let me do that. There we go. Next, we have 0 plus 0 again, because this gets inverted plus our carry of 0, so that'll give us a 0, and carry 0. Then we have 1 plus an inverted 1, which is 0. So 1 plus 0 plus our carry of 0 is just a 1 with a carry of 0. And then we have our final digit, 1 plus 0, because it's got inverted, plus 0 is going to give us a 1 and a carry of 0, like so. First thing we check, does this carry out match this carry out? Yes, they do. 0 is equal to 0. They're both the same bit, so our answer is valid. Now we throw out that carry out bit. It's of no more use to us. And we'll take a look at the number. We see we have a 1 in the last position. That means it's a negative number. Now, off the top of my head, I don't know what 1101 is in 2's complement, so I have to reverse this to see its positive number for me to figure out what negative number this is. So we have 1101. We flip the bits, 0, 0, 1, 0 add 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So we have negative. So this is positive 3 in binary, but since our answer was negative, I know that the answer was negative 3. And there we go. Our subtractor is easily subtracting any negative and positive numbers that we give it right off the bat. Now the next step is how can we create this binary adder and subtractor in one circuit? How can we make an ALU of sorts, an arithmetic logic unit, that can both add and subtract numbers together with the least amount of circuitry possible. That's for the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all then.